A big mistake people make when they start intermittent fasting is not increasing the amount of protein that they're eating, because it turns out that various studies find that when people compress their feeding window, sure, they lose weight, but a larger portion of that weight loss is actually coming from muscle. And in today's show, I want to help you prevent muscle loss during fasting, because actually this study published in the journal JAMA titled Effects of Time-Restricted Eating on Weight Loss and Other Metabolic Health Parameters in Women and Men with Overweight and Obesity found that 65% of the weight that was lost over the course of this 12-week time-restricted feeding protocol, and the feeding window was eight hours, so it was pretty generous, all things considered. Again, 65% of that weight loss was from muscle, which is counterproductive for long-term weight maintenance. The scientists say, we found a significant reduction in lean mass in the time-restricted eating group. In the in-person cohort, the average weight loss in the TR TRE group, time-restricted eating, it's also known as TRF, time-restricted feeding, was 1.7 kilograms. So we're talking about four pounds, slightly less than four pounds, but about 65% of this weight that was lost was from muscle which is really not good for your long-term weight maintenance. And so in most studies, typically what you see in terms of weight loss from muscle is about 20 to 30%. So when it's 65%, that's problematic. And so what are the countermeasures? How can we prevent muscle loss during fasting? Because we know that fasting has many benefits. As you can see in this image here in figure one, part A, part of the benefits of fasting is it lowers your glucose and lowers your insulin. That's also part of the downside with fasting because we know that insulin is anti-catabolic. Insulin stimulates muscle protein synthesis. Insulin is protective from a muscle-centric perspective. Now, it has downsides, of course. We know hyperinsulinemia is problematic. It is linked with all sorts of metabolic health challenges with metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease and atherosclerosis and obesity and the whole thing. But if you look at it through the lens of muscle, we know that insulin is important for preventing muscle loss. And so this might be why we should be suggesting a higher protein diet in people, especially when they're intermittent fasting with the goal of losing body fat. And so we're going to talk about why most people should be consuming north of 1.6 grams of protein per ideal pound of body weight if they are intermittent fasting, especially if you're over the age of 65. We're gonna talk more about this paper in just a moment, but today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Blinkist. Blinkist is hands down one of the best apps to stay sharp during this day and age. I use it anytime I'm driving. In just 15 minutes a day, you can understand the most important topics and key takeaways from over 6,500 nonfiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes. Blinkist curates the most important highlights from amazing books that I go to all the time, including 12 Rules of Life by Jordan Peterson, Decisive, from Dan and Chip Heath. Even more, Blinkist has a new feature called Blinkist Spaces. And this feature enables you to create a space with friends or family, people in your household, where you can recommend titles to each other. All members of a shared space can access all titles in the space with or without a Blinkist premium membership. So you can get a seven day free trial and 25% off your Blinkist annual premium membership by clicking the link in the description below or scanning this QR code that's on your screen right now. This is an amazing tool. I use it all the time. There are so many great books that you should always revisit, like I go to, Decisive by Dan and Chip Heath, as well as Influenced by Robert Cialdini. These are books that will change your life, my friends. So to be reminded about their key takeaways is essential. So going back to protein, I think protein gets underappreciated, especially in the context of fasting. And this is important, again, to prevent muscle loss. Now, how can intermittent fasting be counterproductive towards muscle preservation? The scientists say the acute effects of intermittent fasting lead to detrimental long-term outcomes for muscle. Then whole day and alternate day fasting would have the greatest consequential effect on muscle mass and remodeling. This is due to the prolonged period with greater muscle protein breakdown and lower muscle protein synthesis compounded by the greater energy deficit state that will likely occur. And so it's important to acknowledge, again, if you're doing a lot of fasting, you also should consider resistance training as well as increasing protein. We'll get to resistance training shortly. Now they say, in consideration of time-restricted eating, fewer meals would likely have a greater negative impact on muscle protein turnover. If time-restricted eating were to be implemented, the hypothesis to improve muscle mass and remodeling suggests that protein intake should be consumed at a daily intake of at least 1.6 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight into a number of meals that the feed window allows separated by three to five hours. And so these are the specific recommendations based upon the best available evidence. Now, it is a very important to recognize that this is even more important for people over the age of 65 that are at risk for what's known as anabolic 
resistance that we've talked about in many other videos. Over the age of 60, 65, we, our muscle protein synthetic machinery can become a little bit more blunted to the effects, the anabolic effects that is of insulin, as well as the amino acids. So we might need even more than just 1.6 grams per day of protein. The scientists say populations who may experience a level of anabolic resistance to dietary protein, such as sedentary obese and or older adults, may be further susceptible to the suboptimal muscle protein turnover and anabolic environment born from intermittent fasting. For example, older adults who consume a balanced daily protein intake or consume a greater number of meals containing adequate protein ingestion generally have greater leg mass and muscle strength. There's also evidence that reduced energy availability, which often occurs in tandem with intermittent fasting, in increases the per meal protein intake required to maximize muscle protein synthesis. And so this might be why when we see people going on a carnivore diet that would have much more protein per se than a standard keto diet or even just a you know, plant-based diet, for example, they tend to be leaner and have maintained their muscle tissue. So I think it's just really important to emphasize the importance of muscle. Now, in conclusion, the scientists say, while intermittent fasting may represent an option for a variety of populations to promote fat loss and improve aspects of metabolic health, additional research needs to focus on the impact of meal frequency on the quantity and quality of muscle mass. In so much as intermittent fasting may be purported as the enemy of body fat, future research must ensure that this is not also the case for muscle. Again, we've looked so much at fat, why not focus now on muscle? From our current understanding of the muscle protein metabolism and taking a muscle-centric view for diet, we highlight that current acute evidence suggests that intermittent fasting may represent a counterproductive strategy to optimize muscle mass and muscle quality. So again, it's very important to focus on protein and prioritizing protein as well as exercise. And that's what's really interesting from this study from the title here is the effects of an eight-week time-restricted feeding 16-8 protocol on basal metabolism, maximal strength, body composition, inflammation, and cardiovascular risk factors in resistance-trained males. So essentially what this study found is that during a 16-8 protocol, the individuals who were embarking on that protocol did not lose muscle mass because they were prioritizing protein as well as resistance training. And so I think it's just important to underscore the importance of this for long-term weight maintenance. It's great if you're preparing for a wedding or some sort of event that's coming up and you wanna fast a lot and so forth, but remember, optimize protein about 1.6 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight per day if you're in a state of potentially anabolic resistance because you're sedentary or you're over the age of 65, you might need to bump that up a little bit to do, to about two grams per kilogram of body weight per day. But essentially what studies show is optimizing protein and increasing resistance training can help prevent the weight loss coming from muscle and help sort of pivot the amount of weight that you're losing, uh, increasing the amount of, of fat mass that is being lost and preserving muscle mass uh, uh, on the body and even possibly increasing that because this study found, again, that people who, and this these were trained athletes, they were able to prioritize the preservation of muscle and increase strength while they were compressing their feeding window and eating just eight hours per day. And so I think in, in the standard general population who isn't resistance training, a much larger proportion of weight loss may come from muscle if they're not prioritizing protein and resistance training. So hopefully that was the take home from this video that you got gathered from that. I'm grateful as always that you tuned all the way in. I'm thankful for our sponsor Blinkist. Definitely check it out in the description below and use the code HIH to save at checkout. Uh, I would love to know what your thoughts are, what your feeding windows are, and how you've changed your feeding fasting pattern with this new research to focus more on the importance of muscle preservation because we know that muscle contributes so much to our resting metabolic rate, to uh, keeping strength and activities of daily living up. So we don't wanna catabolize our muscle and exacerbate some of the health consequences as a result of that. So as always, my friends, thanks for watching all the way through. Appreciate your likes, your comments. We will catch you on a future video down the road.